always make the money Never let the money make you No matter the digits of the miles that you roam You never too far gone when you can't dial home I love you Everything that you are Everything that you ain't You my one true star Shoot for the moon and you'll land in the galaxy Heaven is within and connected by your tapestry I love you Yo, it's Justin Coletti from Sonic Scoop. What are we doing today? We are kicking off a whole new series on hip hop production with one of my favorite Sonic Scoop contributors, Paul Womack, AKA Willie Green. If you are not familiar with Paul Willie Green Womack, he is a tremendous producer, engineer, mixer. He's worked across genres, but notably in hip hop. He's worked with artists like Wiz Khalifa, The Roots, Open Mike Eagle, Billy Woods. He's worked in other genres too. Big gospel artists like Donnie McClurkin. He's worked in rock and across genres, but today it is all about hip hop production. And he is going to be creating a track, a whole hip hop beat production and arrangement from the ground up, just a blank session and a found loop, and then a whole bunch of stock tools inside of Steinberg's Cubase DAW. That is Paul's preferred DAW. He's been using it for like two decades and for good reason. You'll see that he's building this track from the ground up using practically all their stock tools. He'll use a couple little other cool add-ons too, like Backbone, a couple others. But these concepts are going to apply no matter what DAW you work in. Not only today we're going to be looking at beat making and hip hop arranging and production from scratch, from the ground up, he's also going to do a video for us on vocal production in the hip hop context, from tracking to editing and comping to tuning to sweetening, whole bunch of stuff. And then there'll also be an installment about mixing when it comes to hip hop, all done by Paul Willie Green Womack, all done in Steinberg's Cubase, again, using mostly stock tools, similar ones that you'll find in your DAWs. But if you are shopping around for your DAW, big shout out and thanks to Steinberg for partnering with us on this series. Cubase is one of the best out there. It's one of the longest running DAWs, but in a way it's like the youngest DAW because new features keep on getting added onto it. And a lot of the features we end up taking for granted in the world of DAWs, music production and music software seem to hit Cubase first. They just have an amazing development team that keeps on adding in new features that set the standard for other DAWs. So definitely check them out at steinberg.net. Big thanks and shout out to those guys. Big thanks and shout out to Paul Womack for doing this with us. Big shout out to you for being here. Remember to hit like and subscribe down below. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Paul. Mr. Willie Green, take it away. Peace, everybody. What's good? My name is Willie Green. I'm a producer and engineer here in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome to my studio, the Greenhouse Recording Company. We're going to do a production series here where I'm going to create a hip-hop track, produce it from top to bottom. We're going to record it. We're going to produce the beat. We're going to edit. We're going to mix it. We're going to break it all down for you right here. Uh, shout out to Sonic Scoop. Shout out to Steinberg for putting all this together with me. We're going to do the whole thing here in Cubase, all the techniques that you can use to make your own tracks. So let's just dive right into it. I've got an artist lined up. Uh, who I worked with for a long time, Liquid from LMA Flossie. You might have seen some of my other videos uh, talking about her records, uh, but we're going to make one from scratch for her. Got a nice sample that we're going to use, and let's go ahead and put this whole thing together, huh? So let's we'll start with the sample. I spent a lot of years actually digging through vinyl to find the right record, and ooh, this cover might have something crazy for me in here, or I know this producer, so I know what's going to sound a certain way, or this engineer's drums are always hitting. But it's hard to produce from samples nowadays, especially from other people's records. It's hard to get clearances, and that's not what we're doing here. But I wanted to do a sample thing for y'all. So honestly, I was just on Instagram one day. I was just on IG, and a good friend of mine, a fabulous artist named Siggy, who I've done a bunch of records with, was just on IG during Corona times, out in the park, socially distancing, and just singing and playing his guitar. And I heard this bit, it was just on his IG Live, and it just really caught me. So I hit him up and I was like, yo, can I use this? I'd already screen grabbed and grabbed the audio. He gave me the blessing, so Siggy, shout out to you. Everyone listening to Siggy's records are really wonderful. And here's the sample from an acoustic version of his song, Place. <laughs> Place, 
So, Siggy's got a great voice, but it sounds a little raggedy, but I don't mind the challenge, right? Sometimes you got to pull what you want out of the sample and leave the rest behind. So let's look at how we're going to do that. When I deal with samples, I just drop them right in Cubase. I just drop them right in and then I do my editing. So this is just the plain sample. And let's see where we want to go from there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to chop out the bits that I want to keep from my main loop. Take the full sample, I'll just drag it over to the side and then just chop out the little bits that I want to keep. So let's start here. All right, so just that much. I'm going to put in the click so you can hear how that works time-wise. So it kind of works time-wise, but I know... I want those chord changes. I know I want that. We could be a family. Yeah. We could be a family. Yeah. All right, like that's kind of the vibe that this 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 song that the, the, the sample puts me in. You know, we're all dealing with different parts of the pandemic. Got different stuff going on. My wife and I are expecting our first child. I'm in a I don't know in a sentimental mood. So that really spoke to me. So I just want to start with just those little bits. Just these two pieces of the chop. What do we have here? So that's the turnaround on it. Um, and here's just the rest of the sample. So we just put that over to the side for a second. We'll come back to that. We're going we're to need more. But here's my first initial chop. And then we've got to clean that up. I know you all are looking at me crazy. Like, what are you going to do with that rumble? Well, here's what I'm going to do with the rumble. We are going to open up spectral layers. So the first thing I got to do... So we'll take these two pieces. We're going to bounce them together as so, so it's just one piece. And then we're gonna go up to our extensions and we're gonna open up Spectral Layers. So Spectral Layers is a different editing tool. We've edited audio for a long time, looking at waveforms like this, but this is a different way. It's a graphic editor so I can look inside the sound. So we'll do some spectral editing here. Okay, so the first thing I hear, we've got a click there where I didn't do the greatest chop. So we're gonna switch this to transient mode and we're gonna select that click, delete it, get it out of here. Cool, that's clean, that's gone. So I can start cleaning out rumble and everything down here like this. We're gonna unmix the components of this. And that's going to separate that bit, that sample, into three components. It's going to separate it into the tonal aspect, the transient aspect, and then whatever it considers noise. If we go back to the top, I solo just the tonal aspect. Okay. The transient. In this case, it sounds a little funny because it's not a drum or anything, and the noise. So that's mostly stuff that we don't want. So with these layers, first I can turn down the noise. Let's duck that, I don't know, 7 dB. All right, so now that's gotten rid of a lot of that high-end hiss. I don't mind a little noise in my sample, but what's got to go is that rumble. That's just not hitting, and we hear that in the tonal. So I'm going to go ahead and select. Let's do everything below 200 for right now. So we don't want to take out everything under 200 because we've got a guitar hit, the low end of that hit. So let's take this, and then when that hit lets off, get this out of here. So let's hear that again from the top. And then there's a little more rumble here at the end. Get that. Mm -hmm. 
I see that in context with the rest of it now. So we've got that. Now there's some random ambience, obviously, Siggy sitting in the park. And so, like, that whistle, I don't know if that's a bird, some kind of hawk or falcon that's in here. I can take that out if I want to take that out. We select our eraser, and we can just go ahead and get that right out of here. I can take it out of the noise, and then it'll be gone. But I kind of like that bird, though. I like that bird. We're going to undo that. And here's why. I'm into this idea of ambient loops, right? If you take anything and put it on a grid and loop that piece for four bars, at some point, any random sounds that are within that loop are going to come back around at a certain point in that four bars, right? That kind of randomness is something I really enjoy in music. It's very easy to put everything on a grid and have exactly what you want in every certain place. And that's great 98% of the time. But sometimes you want something a little random in there, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of ear candy in there. And I like that bird. And that bird is going to come around and hit at the same time in that loop every time. So I want to keep him in there, right? So we're going to keep the bird. And we're going to start here. At the bottom end of that guitar hit that I do like is just a little bit too much. So we're going to delete that. Okay. So we're going to keep that. We're going to rock with that as our first piece of the chop. That's our main sample. And now, here, I have bounced that. And now, let's hear. But time-wise, we're still a little off, right? Like, if we put our click in. Right? So, I like the sample, but that it doesn't lock in the timing. So then we're going to come over here and we're going to look at audio warp. I'm going to put this in free warp so I can see my grid. And we're going to warp this sample to lock it to the grid. So we know first and foremost that downbeat has to be at the top of bar two. So this sounds like it's rushing a little bit, so we're gonna nudge that back. Now this last hit has to come up to beat four. Okay, and then that is just, now we've got our loops. We'll trim this back, and we can loop it out for days. All right, so now we got a loop. Now we can build on something. So I've got it here chopped out and stretched out. Uh, in the same way that we just did. That's a nice loop. I want to get to the drums, but that's not quite enough to carry a record, right? So let's let's chop some more. So right there, on this second one, I've added an echo of the downbeat. So when you get that on, on, on beat one, on beat two, I'm echoing that. So that is the same piece right here. I put it on a different track, but now we're going to start putting a little bit of sauce on it for some interplay with these samples. So I went to the trusty phone line filter 
preset and the EQ here. It really does a good job. Sometimes I might adjust this resonant peak here, but just to give it a different texture to what we just heard. So we've got some frequency dynamics, if you understand what I mean. And then we're going to splash into this delay so that rings out. And we let that ring over it. But I want a little bit more. So we went back to the sample and chopped out another bit. So that is from the end of Siggy's performance. If we look back here, wherever I found that open guitar. Come to mind. Right, so there it is. So we take that. And we just add that in. I want to reinforce the strum that's on the downbeat. And then I want to put a little bit of motion at the pickup to bar two. So I'm leading the loop. Okay. So now we're getting some more movement going on there. But I'm a four bar loop type of dude, you know? If you got the right two bars, you can loop out two bars forever. And if it feels good, you know, rock with it. I'd like to have a little more interplay. So we have that downbeat strum, but I want a little more strum action. So I went to the sampler track and I just took a little piece, a little strum. <laughs> So we've got that going a little bit of room, we got a little reverb on there, and then a little eighth note delay just to give a little more movement. Uh, so it's kind of bouncing, let's give that give that bounce there. That's the interplay with the delay and with the and with the sample that combined with everything else gives some real nice movement. <laughs> Okay, so now that's got some movement to it. You can rap on that now. There's some movement. It guides the kind of flow that I want to get out of the out of the artist. If I just give them this. It's cool, but it doesn't give a lot of rhythmic information to spark any kind of flow from the, from the MC. I'm not going to tell any MC, rap this or rap like this. You got to call MC who you trust to approach the song how you want. But that doesn't mean you can't give a little bit of guidance to how they want to attack it. I prefer to do that musically than writing an email like, well, spit it like this. I don't ever want to be like, well, rap like this rapper on this song. Because if I want that rapper on that song, I'll just listen to that song or I'll call that rapper. But if I'm bringing somebody in, I'm bringing them in for their musicality. So I want to give Liquid a guide here. So when she writes to this, is gonna, I'm going to imply some rhythmic ideas that she can just take in. So that's where the delays come from and those extra strums like that, right? So that's cool, but I know we're going to want a hook. And I don't think this is the hook. So I kind of start building things up and then knowing, okay, well, I'll take some stuff out when it comes to the, when it comes to the verse. So I did a little more chopping here on the hook, and that sounds like... All right, so... That sounds like some finely tuned chaos, which is how I like things, but let's really look at it. I'll take these two and I'll put the click on. Similar move that we did on the verse chop. We've got a sample and we're bringing in a little more of the vocal here. I want that. 
my place. So I added a little bit of that and then. So I really want that woo. I don't know who said woo like that in the crowd when they were listening to Siggy, but I loved it. So I want to put that in. And sure, there's some noise in there, but it's kind of this wave kind of effect that we get from the static. I kind of feel it. So we're going to rock with that. All right, so we've got a little randomness like this bit here from the kids who are playing. So, you know, I want this idea of family, kids running around. So we'll leave that, you know, maybe it'll stay. I kind of like it. So here, the voice got a little bit loud here, so I just took my pencil tool and drew in a dip. So I know every time I copy and paste this piece of the sample, that will always stay with it. It's a little, a little loud there. See, I'm bringing down a little bit of volume in other places just to kind of make everything fit in, because this fits here, but I've got the filter that is going to echo off that. Okay, and we bring in a little, back a little of that noise. It's really the guitar that went out of there. Again, kids running, all that kind of stuff. But here is where kind of the cool thing happens. So we got that yeah, yeah, that yeah in there. So I doubled that up. But then as a little treat for the headphone wearers, I'm automating some pan here. So it's going to hit left and it's going to hit right. And we get back to that echo. So I'm chopping these samples based off of each other. And then again with the yes, or the woos, So I'm going to let those, again, move back and forth a little bit. And yeah, it adds a little bit of that wave in there, but just some space and a little something special for, for the headphone wearers. So that's our chopped hook. So I didn't bring back the beginning of that chop because I wanted to let the end of the hook hit that we could be a family and so that's kind of, you know, going back to the thesis. Now this is kind of a busy vocal chop for a hook that I'm planning on putting vocals on. And that's why I'm not necessarily worried about getting all of every word or worrying about short chops. First, I'm chopping. I want it to be a chopped sample. So I don't want it to sound like somebody came in and sang that or played it because someone's going to rap or sing over the top of this. That's part of the art of chopping a sample is having that chopped sound. Like I still want to keep that. So I'm cool with that. Pretty much how that is. I'm feeling it. So now we've got samples kind of locked in. Let's look at some drums. Let's get drums going. So the way I did these strums, let's mute the snare. Let's listen to the sample chop. So it's got that anticipated uh, 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 uh. Well, you know, I might kind of want that in the snare. Like, that's a common snare pattern that you're hearing lately. So let's... All right, so I like that. We're going to Backbone, the new drum synth, amongst many other things, from Steinberg. It's really, really dope. And I've got just a snare sound I dropped in there. And... Put the filter a little bit and just kind of 
you know, put that in there. And it's on keys. I can play that whatever pitch I want to play it, right? It's not just on a pad and that's the pitch. I can play it up and down the keyboard. So this is the tone of the snare that I wanted. But now we can go back later on if I want to do some kind of drop and use different pitches on the snare. I've got that easily done. So I'm excited about that. So we'll roll off a little bit on top. This snare is a little bright. Now, you're going to see as we start to pick sounds, drum sounds in particular, I'm kind of mixing as I go. And that's important when it comes to production because if I have the wrong snare drum, if this was like a super low-pitched, long tail snare, this pattern doesn't work, right? Because it's too much size in there for this kind of short chop snare that's going to go with the guitar. So I'm already thinking, okay, pitch-wise, what do I want to deal with? Length-wise, what do I want to deal with? Tone-wise, this starts to encroach on mixing where do I want it super compressed? Do I want something long and verby? I'm thinking about all these things as I go. That way, when the beat's right, I already know that it's right. <laughs> All right, so we're going a little bit of reverb here. And okay, I like that to start. Let's look at a kick drum. Okay, so got a kick pattern. I'm back in backbone again for a kick. I tried a few things, I layered in some stuff, and then the noise. What does this noise sound like? Yeah, I don't want that. So that's got to go. It's a different kind of kick for me. It's a little bit tubby, but I kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling that. I don't know where I want to go with the low end yet. I'm fine with leaving a little bit of that tubbiness in there. This noise, that almost woodblock sound on there, it's kind of cool. It adds a different texture to the kick, and I'm, I'm, I'm into that. So we'll keep that in. And the main part of the kick, right? It's a little woofy. It's a little on the grimy side. So I'm into it. You know, I like to grime. We rolled the filter off here. Now it's up here. Getting a little bit too much of that hit. And I want that to kind of thump. So we're going to roll that filter back down. That's some tonality there. Now, because... I'm in backbone. I can play it across the whole across the whole spectrum. I kind of I don't know. I want to mess around with some tuned kick drums on this, right? Like let's do something a little bit different. So we're tuning the kick. I'm just playing it. Find my intonation that's matching what the sample is doing, matching the chord changes. This is super duper critical. Please make sure that your low end, your basses, your 808s, or if you're doing a tuned kick thing like this, it's got to be in tune with the song. It is of extreme importance. It's not enough just to have a lot of low end rumbling down, around down there because that's all it's doing is just rumbling around down there. That's not what we're here for. We want to find the clear low end that supports the song. And so it's got to be in tune. You got to figure out what, what, the, what the change is, what key your song is in. And if you've got melodic type low end, like a bass or 808s, make sure that those are in the key of the song that you're playing. It's going to knock so much harder because the bass is where it's supposed to be, not just all over the place. So we've got a little kick pattern here that's going to work with us. Okay, let's hear that in context. Okay, so I like that, but I come from a big band jazz background where everything is about that backbeat, that two and four. And I want to accentuate the backbeat because the snare is not just doing two and four, but I want to make sure that's reinforced. So we're going to bring in a clap, and we've got that on our sampler track here. So I took off a little bit of this beginning that was kind of not straight attack. <laughs> All right, so we've got that going on. That's pretty bright. 
So I'm going to roll off the top. The filter section here in Cubase is super powerful. Each filter has five different slopes that you can use. On the top end, on that high cut filter, if you just put it on 6 dB per octave, it's just a very nice roll off to take a little bit of that harshness. If you got harsh hi-hats that are killing your eardrums, or a little too much crisp on that snare, just put that thing on 6 and just turn it on. Hey. Right? So that smooths that right out. It's a clap. We still want some brightness. And then there's a lot of low end. My uh, my meters are telling me here. So we're going to take that out. We don't need all that low end in the clap. Okay. So now we got a nice back beat. We're starting to feel stable here in the beat. So now I just need a little bit of movement. It's a little plotty, you know? So I'm going to bring in a shaker. Let's look at the shaker. What do we use for the shaker? We're back in backbone, and we did a little resynthesis of something. Let's look at what this is. So that's our shaker, this regular shaker part. All right, so we're moving pitches. I've got a delay on here. Let's take that off for a second. We're going to look at why I'm doing that. Getting a little bit of room. So that's dry, just shaker. I mean, cool. It's a shaker. That's fine. That could work. Let's put a little pizzazz on that. Let's do something. So this layer here is coming from some kind of bass synth. Adjusted the formant. So the formant was up here. Okay. And then we're going to roll off some of the top on the filter. Roll off some of the bottom. This is a high pass. So yeah, this is a bass sound. So that's a little too much, again, for the shaker track. So we're going to roll that off all the way up to 1.3K. I'm going to adjust our level on this layer here. So that's without the resynthesis. With the resynthesis, with this... With this with the, with the format work and all that. So yeah, it's a little weird, but I like a little weird. So a lot of what you're hearing when you're in solo with that bass sound there gets eaten up in the track, but there's some texture in there now. Now we got something to hit, right? And so that shaker, I want to put it in a little bit of a space. So we're going to send it to this room. But one thing I like to do with my shakers and my hi-hat sometimes, let's look at this rhythm right here, all right? It's on the upbeats, but it is on the and of one, on the and of two. So they're all technically quarter notes. So I'm going to send that to an eighth note delay to fill in some of those cracks. Now, I could play this, but, you know, delays are, more, are a lot more fun. But that's going to give me an eighth note shaker pattern rather than that quarter. All right. So, okay. Now we're hitting. Let's see how that works in the chorus of that other chop. That's a beat. We got a thing going here. Now, my only concern is that 
is that chorus part now full enough? I want to make the chorus the event. Remember, the chorus is the thesis of your term paper. So the chorus needs to be an event. I want to add just a little more harmonic stuff going on in there just to kind of flesh it out and give it some fullness. Starting with that, we're going to go to the chord track here in Cubase. If you are not a keyboard player, like your man right here, sometimes you need a little help getting the chordal ideas that you want, might want out. I understand chords. I like pretty chords. I can't necessarily sit down in a keyboard and plunk them out. My hands look like this. That's not how you play keys. But the chord track will allow me to put in the song changes and then trigger synthesizers with those chords to play what I'm looking for. So through a quick text message with Siggy, found out our changes are D flat major seven and A flat with the ninth on top. So I can make these anything I want. Like if I, I can alt click and make my, give myself an X and then I double click on that and I can choose any chord that I want. So here, if we want that to be F major seven, well, that's not in the song. E flat, that ain't it. Now we're talking, right? And if I want to change my inversions, if I want to change my voicing, I've got that up here too. So we're just going back and forth, D major seven, A flat ninth, and we are going to bring in some synths. So we'll start with the keys here. So these keys, once I had a sound that I liked, I printed the chord track information. These keys are triggered by the chord track, but once I have what I wanted, I printed them to MIDI, so I've always got it there. All right, nothing too crazy, just some nice atmospheric building out of what we got going. So let's hear that in context. Got that. I got this buzz track. So these keys are coming from, where are these keys coming from? The keys are coming from Halion, and that's just this mellow DX. And yes, I did not forget about the bass. We're going to bring the bass in in just one second. All right, so we got this little funky bass pad thing going on here. We've got this very pretty pad going on. Siggy's sounding great here. We've got to put a little bit of funk in there to let everybody remember what we're, what we're really about. So let's add a little bit of this buzz bass. Also come from Hallion. It's an arpeggiated type thing. Okay, so that gives us another little texture in there. Okay, cool. But it's not rumbling yet. Yeah, the kick is big, but we know we gotta have we gotta have the fat bottom because that's what I'm about. So let's get a bass sound going here. And this is also coming from Halion. Halion, Halion. Okay. Now we now now we're in the bottom. So we got this double synth bass thing going here. Okay, so that is really hitting down there. So we're gonna bring in our Halion tracks. What are we doing on this bass? Yeah, we gotta calm that a little bit. We're gonna take a little bit of that attack off like we're doing here. We're gonna compress it, we're gonna saturate it. We'll get into more of the mixing on it later on, but I want it full, I want it warm sounding. So we're gonna hit it with the magneto with the tape. So 
So that's cool, but you see, I need it more than just in the in, in the hook. So now I'm thinking, okay, so you go into the verse sections, we gotta have some other tonalities. But I wanna keep this open still, you know? The way that the sample is speaking to me, I wanna kinda keep that. So I'm gonna bring in the bass halfway through each verse. So if we figure, okay, one two, bars one through four will be the intro, and then we're into what is set it up as a 16 bar verse. When I'm making a beat for somebody, I like to give them some guidance as far as an arrangement goes. So I'll do some kind of intro. I'll generally lay it out as 16 bar verse, eight bar hook. The MC wants to go outside of that. They're more than welcome to. We have a million songs in the world that are 16, eight, 16, eight. But as far as a good place to start with it, we'll start there. We got a four bar loop. So it feels kind of natural to go four times through the verse. So there's your 16. I'm not afraid of 12 bar verses. I'm not afraid of 20 bar verses. You know, however the artist wants to write, let's do it like that. But at least to begin with, we're going to set this up as 16 and then eight on the hook. So at bar nine of the verse, in this case, bar 13, because we have our intro, we're going to start, we're going to bring this bass in there. Okay, so now this is working with my kick drums, which is why it was so important that those were in tune, because the bass is in tune, the whole low end is in tune together, now it's working together, not against each other. And then we'll just add a little bit of that pickup. I've got a turnaround pickup at the end of the bass loop just to have some momentum to bring that loop back around. So we'll lead in with that. back in the verse. And that's our joint. I like it. I like it a lot. It's upbeat still, even at a kind of down tempo 83. I'm kind of a down tempo dude, but even from what feels like a slow and maybe almost sad sounding sample with the energy of the drums and the shaker, we kind of picked up the vibe a little bit, but we kept it pretty. We kept some long tones in there to really make it nice and lush in the chorus, but it still knocks. And that's what we're about. Uh, so the next step, we're going to bounce this. We're going to send this over to Liquid, get her approval on it, make sure it's something that she wants to write to, and then we'll have her come in and we'll cut these vocals. So I'll see y'all then. Peace.